Valley Prison in Indiana contains a super maximum security unit. Some of the state's most ruthless and dangerous prisoners are housed here. For its 2,200 inmates, the reality of life inside this prison is hard time. Prisoners don't always leave their crimes behind when they enter the gates of Wabash Valley. We've had a, a, a couple homicides, we have a lot of assaults. This is a subculture in here. We have the same type of crimes that you have in the streets. Manual, what range? 2J1, 1J3. This is a super maximum facility here within the state of Indiana, and uh, this facility houses some of the state's worst of the worst. Uh, whenever they become uh, combative, assaultive on one another or on staff, they're sent to this facility and uh, are housed in the secured housing unit where they're locked down for 23 and a half hours a day. Secure night. As head of internal affairs, Don Tyler, a former detective, is the prison's top cop. He and his unit investigate any crimes committed within the facility's walls. Tyler. All the offenders in the security housing unit are dangerous. Some of them are, are serving multiple life sentences. They have nothing to lose. And this is the end of the road for them. Recently, we had a situation where three offenders on the rec pad feigned an injury to one of them and requested a nurse. Instead of the nurse responding, three staff members responded to the door on the medical emergency. At the rec pad door, when the officers came to check on the, the medical emergency, they ordered the offenders to cuff up uh, for their own protection, not knowing that the door was jimmied. The offenders jerked the door open and come charging out with their shanks, slashing and cutting at the officers. The officers start backing up towards the core door in order to escape the, the attacking offenders. They were putting their hands up, taking the slashes and cuts to their arms and their face. At the door, a, struggle, a tug of war ensued where the officers out here were trying to pull the, this officer on into the core area. The offenders had a hold of him pulling on that side. After the tug of war at the door, the officers were able to get out into the core area and get the door secured. Thus, there weren't any injuries, but the officers could have been killed if they hadn't got out this doorway. Dan Haskins was the officer being pulled through the range doors by his colleagues. He suffered a stab wound to his shoulder. Apparently, during that time, I knew I was hitting the head uh, with a sock full of batteries. At that time, I didn't know I stabbed. There's always a touch of fear. Uh, working here, uh, if you haven't got a touch of fear, you don't need to be here. Officer Haskins never assumes that the cell doors are locked when he walks the range. He knows they can be jimmied open by inmates, ready for a fight. But when you come out on a range, you got to prepare yourself that something can happen. Uh, that a door can't open up and that offender can't come out. These guys get out, in which it has happened. They're going to come at you with the intent to hurt, maim, or kill. You have to keep that in the back of your mind, that this is a prison. Take a reality check, realize where you're at, keep it under control. Staff have to be ever vigilant while working around these offenders. You never know when they're going to go off. As an example, 
we had a nurse treating an offender for self-inflicted wounds. The offender I was working with in the shoe um, was not emotionally stable. But he was also an angry person, and he's just, that's just his basic makeup. Now, normally, these offenders are handcuffed with their, uh, behind their back. Due to the nature of these wounds, we had to leave the cuffs in front so she could treat him. See what happens here. He had threatened me two hours before he hit me. He had previously injured other officers that morning and had thrown stuff on other officers that morning. And he was in four-point restraints. That's why he was on film for everything. And we had had to give him a forced injection to help calm him. He did not like that, did not want that, and he threatened. Two hours later, he had pulled open an old wound from earlier in the morning where he had cut himself and inflicted a wound. And when I was cleaning it, he got his chance to get even with me, and he took it. Yeah, yeah, he just hit the shit out of me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that I was so, so much angry with him. I think the anger came later. Uh, initially, I think my first impression was I was so shocked that it actually happened. 184. Let's have a seat right here. Oh. How you doing, Mr. Payne? Despite her brutal attack, nurse Rabina Darkis came back to work in the secured housing unit the next day, but her ordeal was far from over. She got blood in her eyes during the attack, so was immediately given medication to prevent AIDS, but ended up suffering side effects that kept her off work for a month. She just hasn't been real cooperative up yeah. to now with your shooters. <laughs> Are you still cheating in the kitchen? Oh, most definitely. <laughs> How do you expect us to get a handle on your blood sugar, Mr. Payne, if you don't help us? I went through anger over the exposure because I was physically sick, you know. And I went through the anger that, you know, he hit me and that I was trying to help him and he hit me. You know. I was treated for post-traumatic stress over it. And so. My family lived through hell for a month, <laughs> you know, because it was probably two to three weeks before we found out that he was not currently HIV positive, but you can never be sure that they're not incubating for at least six months, so. Yeah, yeah, you just hit the shit out of me. Nurse Darkis was determined to testify when the offender was sentenced in an outside court. Is that on camera? <laughs> but I wanted him to understand that I was not afraid to face him. You know, and I also wanted him to understand that that's not acceptable behavior for anybody. Even an animal doesn't act like that. You know? This man was charged in an outside court and received an additional three years on his sentence. Originally, he was serving 12 years for carjacking. After he serves that sentence for carjacking, he will serve three more years for what he done to this nurse. I think it's totally ridiculous that the most they can get is three years for assaulting a staff member. I think that's pathetic. Yeah. Big Tom was saying that uh, he was going to give you a round for your money now. You yeah, know, this I'm dead lift record. Yeah. Yeah. Think he's going to get you? No. Nah, hey, you going to rise to the occasion? No, nah, I'm going to rise to the occasion. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We didn't work this hard for nothing to be right. champions. It's not, right. you know. It's the final night of the prison's weightlifting competition. The night that decides if Rebel Givens and Robert Bell will successfully defend their titles. Yeah. I could lay back and just watch him, you know, right. shoot, try to go right. for my record. But I, but I was trying to get another record, right. which was the bench. Yeah, I don't think you he's know. gonna get it this year. Yeah. I don't think he's gonna get it. He is in my way. I got no no on tonight. The psychological warfare has already begun. Man from the boys. Yes, sir. This is set by 100 pounds. He's got to go 635 or 640. 
Hard to get you. Yeah. Oh, you got to stay focused. Can't find too much energy. I'm trying to wait for it. Got to go and get it. Yeah. Got to go and get it. Don't talk about it. Be about it. You ready? You ready? You got to be about it. You gotta be about it. Don't talk about it, be about it. Who's, who, 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 who's doing what? That's the guy to hand it out. He had 505. Now he got 530. Give me some! Put that shit through the floor. Let's go. Woo! Come on, Drive it, man. Bar get speed, baby. Bar speed. Don't Drive it off the floor. Get him away! Drive it off the floor. <laughs> Good lift. Good lift. Excellent lift. Offender Campbell has just deadlifted 280 kilograms, almost three times his own body weight. I like me. I look baby. Look good. RV. You run this here. Huh? You run this here, my guy. A lot of people think that this is all brute strength. Probably about 75% of this stuff is mental. You know, concentration. The mind thing is what basically gets you through these meets. Because I can't go in there just any day of the week and just pick up 600 pounds off the floor. I just can't do it. I mean, I gotta really focus. I gotta really psych myself up. Because I'm only 230 pounds. Work, baby. Go to work. Your money, baby. Go to work, pal. Go to work. To the heat. To the heat. Do run this. This is you, baby. Do run this, RB. To the heat, baby. 650 pounds for bail. You got one over here. Hey, though. You got to tell us that's hate. Here he goes for the bar. 650 pounds. Good pull right here. Here we go. They're already at the professional level without the uh, hardware that you can get on the outside. When you lift on the outside, you have suits you wear for increase your strength, and they don't have those, and they're doing the weights that those people are doing without it. So if they get supplementation and their proper apparel, they, they could do a lot more weight. <laughs> known affectionately on the inside as Soup, may have blown this lift, but he's already outlifted his competitors. Yeah, he's got the competition tonight. And he burned him. He got him. I'm the guy, Snoop! Come on, D.J. Let me know! Let me know! I 
or left? Hankins was perfect. You just gonna get stronger as it go. What you want? Try what you want. 665, baby. Get money. Yeah, I'm going 665 on this. This is it. This, this is my last one. Everybody be perfect. Come on, let's go. Turn on the light, Bryce, and talk to it. Turn on the light, Bryce, and talk to it, baby. You scared me, Pull that shit up. RB. You run this, man. This is your event. This here is your event. I'll visualize my lift. I'll walk through the whole lift in my head. I will actually complete the lift in my head before I'm even out there at the meet. So when I'm at the meet, then tunnel vision comes into play. I don't see nothing else, don't hear anybody, don't see nothing but that bar. It's me and that bar, and I just go and execute. It's all about a mind game. You gotta psych yourself up. No pain, no gain. I got it up, I locked it out. One judge gave me the thumbs up, one judge gave me the thumbs down. I was trying to break my own record, with, uh, which was uh, 630. I went 635. I think my lift was good, just yeah. like Ken. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 really don't, we don't really uh, trip on it, cause as uh, long as we get it off the floor, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's, that's, all, that's all we wanted. I work, I work in the kitchen, I'm on my foot eight hours, 10 hours a day. But uh, I got a 615 deadlift. My, my record's in here stand. And you got the state record. I got the state record, so mm -hmm. until they break that, it's we all good. We all got the state yeah. record. Yeah. I got the I state got record, record in the deadlift. You know, I hey, got it in the bench, too. It's always the state meet. The state meet is this summer, so I got 650, 650 on the board. I see enough of it. These guys, are, they're good lifters. Yeah. They're good. Thanks. As long as Murphy lets me keep coming back, I'll watch these yeah. guys grow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate yeah, we appreciate it. it. We appreciate y'all coming. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Good job. Good job. Yeah. It's been a good night, John. It's been Woo. a good night. It's been great. It's yeah. been great. We will see you in February. Push your pull. This year's Battle of the Titans is over. The prison champions hold on to their titles. You know, but we, you know, it wouldn't be no fun if we didn't yeah. have people, you mm -hmm. know, chasing after us. You know? Right. But we yeah. work hard for us, though. That's you right. Know? But it's, it's all worth it, man, because we get in there and get to, uh, you know, doing what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, it brings everybody else alive. You know, everybody yeah. feed off of that mm -hmm. positivity. Right. And, you know, they'll start getting their personal best and stuff. You know, right. that's how it was last time, as mm -hmm. you can remember. Yeah. Hopefully we can get it resolved this afternoon. Yeah, I'll be down there soon to see if we can get it taken care of. All right. Bye. We're going to try to settle our bug case today. Uh, as litigation liaison here at the facility, I generally have about 200 pending lawsuits at any given time. Uh, many of them uh, turn out to be quite frivolous. We had an offender who 
uh, filed a lawsuit against us claiming he had vermin living in his lower intestines and that we were negligent in not locating uh, the vermin living in his lower intestines. Another one that springs to mind is an offender who had lost a portion of his finger committing the crime that caused him to be incarcerated and once he was incarcerated he wanted our medical staff to amputate the rest of his finger even though it worked perfectly fine and the medical staff saw no medical reason to amputate it so he sued us to go to court. So today we're going to try to get the bug case resolved before it goes to court. Prison lawyer Lee Heffling has to defend every lawsuit against the institution. Come in. Alan. Ah, Mr. Heffling, are you here for your bug? I'm here for a bug. I hope it's our bug. I hope it's Mr. the right Burton's one. Mr. Burton's bug, I understand. Right. Well, I've got these bugs that the chaplain collected, bugs and medallions and uh, things. Well, I've got to have uh, a medallion, too. Do you I have... guess this has gone back over a couple years ago that he actually uh, got these things. Well, do we know which one's Mr. Burton? I think the little critter's right in there. Well, I'm sure Mr. Burton will give it a close examination. Okay. I think we can go ahead over to the uh, custody control unit. Yes. All right. Well, let's go and see if we can get Mr. Burton to pick the bug for us. Craziest lawsuit we've had in a while. We've had postage stamps and everything else, but I've never been sued over a bug. How much is he wanting? He wants three thousand dollars for this stuff. I'll tell you what, three thousand dollars for that bug? I had an apartment in Florida. <laughs> that thing, I've been a millionaire. That's right. Well, you know, the other thing is, it's our bug. It looks like one of those palmetto it's, bugs. It's, like it, no, it's, roach it's a something. state bug. It's been paid for by the taxpayers, and we're not going to just, you know, let anybody go painting on our bugs anytime they want. We'll probably get him for destroying state property. Uh, at least Did painting he kill the state bug? property. I don't know where he got the paint. These artifacts signify a spiritual and cultural transformation that I have made since being in prison. Thank you, Mr. Burton. Right. Just have them there if you don't mind. Right. Um, you and I spoke last week, <clears throat> we were waiting for the court hearing, you remember, about the religious artifacts, the medallion, uh, the mm -hmm. bug, or bugs that have been painted. You know, we were talking about all that. Okay. Yes. And presuming we've got the medallion and bug, whatever it is that you, you know, are wanting to send out, all right. then I'm going to ask you to sign basically an agreement that says that you know, you're willing to release all claims against the state except for court costs, but otherwise you're going to release us from any claims that you would have in this lawsuit. You're not going to seek any damages. You, know, you filed this thing, you I think wanted $3,000 in damages. Right. I feel you know, that, that I deserve you know, some type of uh, you know, uh, damages in mm -hmm. regard to you know, the emotional stress that I've been put through. You know, you'd have suffered that in, in, in any event, I suppose, because you're not going to be allowed to have that, and I'm satisfied the judge isn't going to order that. But can we go ahead today and, and at least determine what it is, see if we've even got the right stuff here? Right. Can we do that? Sure. Fair enough. I'm going to ask Mr. Fennan then to go ahead and uh, he's got this display board that apparently he got from the chaplain and see if you can tell me what's on there that is yours, okay? All right. Now, this isn't trick or treat, you know. I don't want you to grab at everything, so, you know, it's... Okay, it was this item here. Can I turn it over? See the other side? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was this item here? Can I turn it over? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one's been cut. Did you, did did you have to cut that to search for something or something? I don't know how it was cut. Was it cut when it arrived? I don't recall it being cut. I never looked at the back of it. Mm -hmm. Looks like it may have been cut to be searched for, you know, maybe some type of drugs or, or some other type of... Uh, and I believe we've got a painted bug or a uh, bug. Do you know anything? It's not painted. It was just preserved. I found it on the yard, okay. and I just I just liked the way it looked. It's, it's preserved. Does it have it any... a beetle. Right. Um, so that's really our bug, bug, right? Pardon? That's yeah. our bug. Well, actually, it's nature. Mother Nature's bug. But it's on state bug. property, right? <laughs> it, was, it was found on state property. Okay, just uh, check. Yeah, those are just <laughs> preserved bugs that I see. It was a spider, I think, uh, uh, a big old beautiful preserved beetle, and a large ladybug. And I just kept them just because of okay. you. Okay. I mean, my contention, I guess, was that even though you were asking for $3,000 damage damages from the court at that time. But see, that was, that was 
with the assumption that these articles, you know, <clears throat> had been lost. Or, yeah, okay. yeah, I wasn't going to have them returned. You know? Okay, well, you're not going to have them returned uh, technically, but you're going to have control over where to send them. Exactly. That's all I've been wanting that from day one. Well, but you apparently want more than that now, because now you want mental stress and strain damages or something. Well, that's that negotiable. Like. Well, okay, you tell me. So, I mean, I'm willing to recommend that the, what, $35, how much you have to pay in court costs to file the lawsuit? Well, actually, uh, I filed indigency and uh, actual amount. So do you, have, do you have any court costs out of pocket you had to pay? Yes. <clears throat> yes, me. but it was, it was a minimal, minimum amount. The judge only had you pay a portion of it or something? Yes. Okay. Uh, it was $9. $9. Actual oh. claims cost was, right. nine, was the court cost and fees was $9. I'd be happy to reimburse you or to recommend that the state okay. reimburse you for the nine dollars. Okay, now it was twelve dollars and five cents worth of copies that I had to make in dealing with this whole situation. Okay, what are your out of pocket costs? Not your stress and strain. I don't want to I'm not here to talk okay, about my that. Out of pocket costs. Right. You know, taking I'm, I'm, into consideration I'm getting to mail those home. I'll, I'll I'll take care of the postage on that, okay? okay. So don't don't include that. <clears throat> All right. My out of pocket cost, I have twenty four oh two. Twenty-four oh two. Twenty-four dollars and two cents. I'll be happy to recommend to the state that they reimburse you the twenty-four oh two if we can agree that we're going to go ahead and send this stuff out today, and we can tell the court that we've reached an agreement. Okay. Um, but if you want damages for your mental strain, I'm not. I'm not in a position to agree to that. I wouldn't even recommend that, and we'll just have to let the judge make that decision. Okay. It was my intention to request the court to award nominal damages, okay? Okay. Against specific staff members who played a role, you know, in depriving me. Including in, Mr. Fennin here? No. Okay. No, Mr. Fennin is not even hook, then, huh? at all. all right. I didn't even know he was involved. I saved you, all right? If nothing, else, if nothing else goes right in this, I saved you. you, yeah. Okay, now. Now, who, right. who, who else? Um, sure, you want to throw Fennin in on this? <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, okay. Fennin safe. If you'll, right. uh, if you'll drop all those nominal charges, I won't press charges for you killing the bug, okay? <laughs> well, actually, I didn't. I found them dead. Can you prove that? <laughs> well, we can <laughs> prove they, they were alive. I you can know. prove he's dead now. You <laughs> yeah, said he's, he's a state bug. Dead. He's definitely <laughs> dead. Um, I was going to also request that the court award exemplary damages. Right, against right. Chaplain against Kern. Against North, Mr. North Kern. For $200. In the amount of 200. I mean, you've rung my bell already when you're over the $200 against Chaplain Kern for punitive damages. There's just no way I would I would recommend that. And even if I did recommend it, there's no way I could get approval on that. Right. Okay. I understand. Uh, you know, I, understand. I have lots of stress and strain every day too. Well, what is your limit? What is what is what, is, what I, do you I, think? I, I can make recommendations, but you know, I I, I I they have to pass the smile test with me. That is, okay. I, what is the smile make test? A, the smile test is if I can make a recommendation to the Attorney General's office without actually breaking into a smile. Uh, then I'll do so. So far, what you've told me, I would I would actually probably start laughing uh, before okay. I could get the whole recommendation out. I mean, you know, uh, if we had lost these things, then we might have some big argument about the amount of damages involved. And you could come in and argue about the amount of time you put in and we've lost these. And maybe we didn't. I mean, I've spent more time on your bug and your medallions, uh, quite honestly, than than I care to. Uh, you know, I mean, and, and I, understand, to. I, understand, I agree, all, and, and I understand to. they're important to you. I'm not, I'm not trying to diminish their importance to you. I'm just saying I got lots of stuff on my plate, uh, and I'm, you know, we're That's way past point. the point of diminishing returns with That's me on this. That's my point. But You're no, making my point for me. No, you my know, point is an unnecessary uh, event. What, that, that, but, 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 but what's unnecessary is, is the idea that we're going to pay you hundreds of dollars for your stress and strain. Who's going to pay me for my stress and strain? This is not for stress. This is for exemplary damages. This is to correct... Well, behavior and practices. The bug case continues. The yard is the prisoner's playground. But it's not just a place of exercise. This is also where the prisoners go to take care of business, legal or otherwise. It might look peaceful, but the potential for trouble is everywhere. Y'all ain't gotta come and harass me. I'm not gonna bother nobody if don't nobody bother me. You know, and that's the bottom line.
A key player in keeping the peace is Intelligence Chief Alan Finnan, who heads the prison's security threat group. Say, quit harassing them about little petty stuff. That's what we needs to be said around here. And that's all I got to say. March or April or next year. As he works the yard, Alan Finnan makes sure he's alert to any issues that might arise amongst the prisoners. Small problems can very quickly become big problems here. There's a unit down there. When you're locked in this cell in a population lockdown, you don't have nothing. Okay. You know, you got to smell another, your bunkie using a bathroom, you got to listen to him. I mean, it's okay. stressful, man. You have two people in a cell. This yeah. is a two man cell facility. The security threat group has to be ready to react to incidents anywhere in the prison, anytime. Where is it? Hey, Van Bleed, I know your business, Marshal. Hey, have you got any names on that 1010 yet? <laughs> How many they got brought in yet? And oh, you've got one in D now? Okay. D looked like he was pretty seriously hurt. Do you know what their race was? Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Okay, thanks, bud. All right. Hey, that was a black and white over in G. We probably need to go over there and check it out. Yeah. Who was it? I, nobody can give me any names. I don't know, but there's a black. They got a black guy cuffed in G and a white guy in D medical right now. It, were there any weapons involved? Um, I know there was injury. I don't know what about weapons yet. Nobody need. No, no one knows anything just yet. So we need to at least check it out. Let's go that way. Okay. I'm gonna go get my hat. My. One thing that we have to do immediately respond to any possibility of, of the racial issues because it's a much greater problem, white versus black. Riggs, Riggs, uh, they took the other guy out before I could even see him. Took him out to where? He's, they're both down here in v -Sag. Are they, Is there one of them still in medical? No, they're both in the No, they're both, oh, both from me. Yeah. Hold me! Oh, man. Probably the greatest issue that we have, or the greatest fear that we have, is for it not to be a gang issue or a security threat group issue, but a race issue. Because when it becomes a race issue, it's not the disciples against the vice lords against the Latin kings. It's the disciples and the vice lords and the Latin kings uniting against the Aryan Brotherhood, the Aryan Circle, the Ku Klux Klan, and a white supremacist group. When it becomes a racial issue, everything expands exponentially. He's on some, he's on some medication, but I don't remember what he's taking. I just ran them both on OIS, and Van Blaricom is a confirmed Aryan Brotherhood, one five and eight. Riggs is unaffiliated. Uh, Riggs has a, uh, he's in for theft conversion. He's got a rape charge. I don't know the details of that, just from the computer. So I suggest we, I we pull them out. Let's see. Hey, Sergeant Johnson, Sergeant Marshall. Hey, can you come you okay? here and explain what happened over what happened? Did he jump you from the back or what happened? Uh, I don't even know. Okay. I don't even Good deal. Do you know who it was? I don't even know. You don't have any don't idea know. whatsoever. It was probably just a horse play that uh, just got out of hand. You were horse playing? Yeah, it was just horse play, really. But you don't know who you were horse playing with? No. I got up from talking to a couple of friends, and, you know, I started walking towards my room. Next thing I know, you know, guys just started swinging at me, you know. And uh, I defended myself, I grabbed him. By defending myself, I grabbed him, and we both fell over the bench, you know. That was it. Did he boot you in the face? No, I, have, I think that's from uh, the, the bench. Uh, the, so you hurt your shoulder and your face on the yeah, bench? Yeah, when I fell across the bench, I fell on my shoulder when I went across the bench. He said I was targeted. You know, he said he got word by a group called the Brotherhood Organization that um, do something to me and so forth, you know. It looks kind of like a circle. How'd that happen on a bench? I hit the side of the bench. I went down on a, a bench where a bench, the 
Um, you know, you mess with one of theirs, then, you know, they get, have somebody do something to you, I guess. I guess he was a called an enforcer. Just, uh, he was talking about the white guys, and I was just like, no, you can't be doing that, man, because they ain't involved in nothing like that. What okay. white guys? The Aryan brothers and what from the other side them? and three and over here. What was he saying just, about them? He was just talking bad about them. I told him, don't be doing that. You, you wouldn't be talking bad about them if they was here. I got eight babies out there that I'm trying to get home to see, you know. And uh, I'm not going to go out here and try to be a hero when I know that my life is, is you know, has been threatened, you know. But I'm not going to go out here and try to play a hero, get me a weapon, and go out here and try to play a hero, you know. Because, you know, the same thing, I can get stabbed just like I can't stab an individual. It can happen to me, you know, in the process of trying to stab an individual, you know. And I don't need that in my life. You threw the first punch. You did, didn't you? I ain't gonna lie to you. I know you're not. I ain't gonna lie to you. I beat him. Hey, if, I ain't gonna let nobody take a first punch on me. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much. All right. Actually, me to defend the rigs also. I'm saying the guy that got here first, he didn't have nothing to do with horse punch. Let's see. I mean, I really don't want nothing to talk about, but I just told them. Okay, sit down. I, you told them, you didn't tell me, okay? Okay. Stay with me, okay? All right. Be patient I with am. me. Be patient, I know with patient with me. Purpose You're here. a patient man. Stay with okay. me on this, okay? Right. At this point, let me tell you what we've got, okay? You didn't start the fight, okay? What we got is you responded after um, the other offender started the fight. How did it turn racial? Racial? Uh, no, no, no. So he's, no, he's telling the truth about he started the fight, but he's lying when he's saying some of the comments were racial. I mean, I don't know what he said. I mean, you said he, you said he said he started he, off the He basically case. said that he said that you and he were talking. You yep. made some comments he took exception to. Those comments were racial in nature, and that he basically went after you. No, I, he, I don't so have no lying. problem with being no racial he, thing, you know. Uh, you don't have a problem there was with that? No. I'm white, believe it to white, should rule the world. The wisdom supreme and the chosen people. The white people, they just stay with the white group. Blacks stay with the blacks, and reds stay with the reds, just like that. My whole family's clan members, so it's just pretty much I was born in that way. What did you say that set them off? Quote yourself to me. I mean, what I say is What did you say just before you went off on it? We was talking about a game, you what know, game? and... Uh, what game? Football game. Which one? Uh, San Diego and uh, Oakland played last night. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. San Diego and Oakland played last night. That's the game you were talking about? Yeah. He let that bitch word come out of his mouth. And it's here in prison. You don't... You don't do that in prison. That's one thing that you don't do is call another man a bitch. And when you do, you just ask him for problems. I mean, he likes San Diego. I like Oakland. I said they was bums or something. Who was bums? San Diego. You just were talking about a football game. Yeah. They were bums. Yeah. Is this the first time you've lied to me in this conversation? I never met you before. I say in this conversation. That was the first time I lied. But you've lied to me in this conversation right now. I don't believe in lying. Then why are you I don't doing think it? I should then have to lie to you. Doing? Then why are you? No, I'm not lying. I don't think I should have to. Let's put them away. You're done. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I mean, I, I mean no. I'm telling you which I don't want to hear, so... I don't, I don't know. No, no you're not, that's exactly what you're not no, doing. No, that's okay. Okay. Say, you gotta do what y'all want to do anyway. I mean, so that's right. Say. One back. I know it's reverse psychology. I'm up on psychology. <laughs> Van Blarcom, yeah. 8-9-4-7-9-2. Yeah. You've been charged with committing a battery upon another person without a weapon or without inflicting serious injury. Van Blarcom did admit that the altercation was the result of having a verbal confrontation, which led to a physical confrontation with offender Riggs. 
Bruce Van Blericom is charged with assaulting Kenneth Riggs and faces an internal disciplinary hearing. Three staff members will decide his fate. Van Blericom further stated that any time someone disrespected the Aryans, it was a bylaw of the Aryan Brotherhood. A confrontation would develop and being disrespected was something he took very serious. He pled not guilty. Yeah, I pleaded not guilty. Well, you got to tell us. I'm guilty. That's basically it. It's all in my past. I just got out of lockup anyway. I ain't been out about six months. I ain't even been out a month. For what? Well, they locked me up for a, a battery, but it got overturned, so they filed a bitch for me. So you want to tell us what happened? Well, that basically tell everything right there. That's it. Step back there and have a seat. Right. I mean, he admitted he's guilty. Yeah, he admitted he did it. They get ready now. Van Blericom's privileges are at stake, including his access to the telephones and the prison shop, and credit time on his sentence for good behavior. You can take one credit class on a V. Yeah, let's do that. Board believes conduct report to be true and accurate and accepts your amended plea of guilty. Written reprimand, don't fight. Uh, two months phone loss, six months disciplinary SAG suspended, and demotion from credit class two to credit class three. All right. Thanks. At his hearing, Kenneth Riggs received exactly the same sentence as Van Blericom, even though he didn't throw the first punch. Since that hearing, Riggs claims there's been yet another incident where he was verbally threatened. I was sitting on my bunk, and uh, the main door kept opening and closing, and I heard, I heard the words says, you're a dead nigger, KC. You know, KC, exact words, KC, you're a dead nigger. I would, I would consider it a very dangerous and very serious situation that I'm in that's not been taken serious from this hearing, from the administration. So I don't go to wreck. I don't even go on the wreck yard, you know, because I fear for my life. I think it is exaggerated, in my opinion. We looked into the remark. We didn't think that the remark was made. We investigated, prepared a report, and passed it on to the assistant superintendent in that area and the superintendent. And we also checked his background, and his background is such that he has been wanting to move from this facility for some time now. He's not happy here, and in some ways, our belief is that he was using this as a reason to try to be transferred from this facility. Negotiations to settle the bug case continue. I just don't think this rises to that level. So right. if you want to make a reasonable demand on me, I'm... I'm what is yeah. reasonable? Well, I don't, that's your, th what's reasonable is we send this stuff home, okay. we dismiss the lawsuit, I'll get your, I'll get your out of pocket expenses reimbursed for you, and we all, we all live and learn. You okay. learn not to wear items that you shouldn't be wearing. Would you be willing to do this? Well, I don't know. Would you be willing to recommend the 2402 out of pocket cost mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and $30 no. in damages? No, probably not. There's a reason What's why I'm asking man? for specifically $30. Why? Explain to me how, okay, how do you come up with $30? The facility has, uh, has assessed a, um, a $30 restitution huh? against me. I got nothing to do with that, Mr. Burton. I know this. This okay. is why I'm just explaining. <clears throat> All right. The $30, I'm asking to balance the scale. Balance, tip the scale here. Balance the scale. It's got nothing to do with this lawsuit. I understand that. Okay. But that was the reason you asked me for what price. You asked me for a number. Right, and a I thought we reached amount. a minute ago, but now you're telling me you want $30 on top of that? Is that where, where we're going? Um, so you can balance the scale, as you put it? Yes, to balance the, balance the scale of justice. Well, okay. You know. 
That's what I'm talking about here. It's okay. about justice for me. Actually, I'm, this whole thing is about justice. I'm talking about the law. And the law is that I can't, I can't settle something that has nothing to do with this lawsuit in but, this lawsuit. But it does in, in regard to damages. All right? Now, I was just saying, I would just ask for your recommendation for the $30. Or if you could, can this, I'll make, I'll can make this document, be, can this document be, be uh, revised? Sure, it can. But, I mean, uh, let's, let's do this. You keep that document. You keep, keep it. You study it. I'll make the recommendation for the court cost plus the $30. As I told you earlier, I don't think they'll go along with that. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Excuse Steve. me, but I'll then make another recommendation that's just for the old, for the plain old court costs, okay? Yeah. And I'll communicate back to you what, what I find out, okay? All right. Yeah. All right. Is that fair that's enough? That's fair. Okay, I'll let you know. Yeah, it's for my loved one's family back home that may, may see this. It's me. Hi. Sergeant Bluff are returning with It's me, Charles Winston Burton III. They love you, brother and son. I like respecting your mother nature and everything that he created. It's the perfection of a bug. You know, I wish we humans could be as perfectly put together, you know, as a, you know, a ladybug, you know, as a, a beetle, you know, as a spider. Right. No. No, I, I understand. All right. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Well, that was the Attorney General's office. We just got off the phone with them after our conversation with Mr. Burton yesterday. He'd sent a letter asking for additional demands uh, uh, on top of what we talked about yesterday. So I reviewed those with the Attorney General's office, and basically their response was that uh, we would see him in court. So I've written a reply to Mr. Burton, letting him know that, and uh, make a copy and send that reply back to him, and uh, which will probably engender yet another letter from him, probably adding more demands, or perhaps adding me as a defendant, I don't know. Um, but in any event, the saga continues and the bug case goes on. Next time in Warbash Valley, there's a wedding in the prison. And contraband cigarettes stir things up.